Hello, and welcome to the fourth Summer Winos location hunting film in only 10 years. We're prolific. We are prolific. If you watch them all in one go, you can see exactly how much we've let ourselves go in the course of the last decade. So today, we are looking for locations from the pilot episode of Last of the Summer Wine. We're going all the way back to January 1973 and the episode of Funerals and Fish. Come on then. Taking my microphone away again. Is it Tuesday already? Well, just imagine I'm Cyril Blaymeyer, a man of military bearing. And I'm walking down from my landlady's house with my Landlady's dog, and on the corner of the street, I encounter a filthy looking schoolboy. Here! Why aren't you at school? I've got spots. Typical. Oh, blimey. On the other side of the street as well, who's this horrible looking Herbert? Well, here we are in the spot where Compo and Blaymeyer first meet, but I feel like something has come between us, Drew. Yeah, the, the bench they were sitting on is gone, but this chuffing Orphan bush is still in the way. It does not do for me to be seen consorting with the depressed classes. Yeah, give us a fag and I'll give you a sniff of me socks. <laughs> The first glimpse we get of Norman Clegg in an episode of Last of the Summer Wine is as he's driving down this country lane on his bicycle and hitches a ride on a passing hearse, inadvertently joining in with a funeral. And they find themselves here, at Holy Trinity Church Cemetery. Let's have a look inside. Well, we came to find the chapel bench where Clegg has a very wistful conversation with his local vicar, but not only is the bench not here anymore, neither is the chapel. Life's like that. A complex texture of conflicting moralities. Yeah, but somebody's got to think about it. And who's got more time than us? And so we find ourselves at the grave of Edith Clegg, nestled between those of George Tinsdale and Hannah Maria Charlesworth. Edith passed away in 1971, which makes Clegg quite a recent widower at the start of the series. But something the more eagle-eyed of you may have noticed is that there is in fact no grave for Edith Clegg. That's because it was a BBC prop carded up from London and presumably carded back down when they were finished with it, although what they were going to reuse Edith Clegg's gravestone for, I'm not really sure. I guess it all just goes to show that one of the recurring themes of Last of the Summer Wine is mortality, and what better way to demonstrate that than to shoot in this beautiful cemetery. Here we are at the library, a focal point of the very first episode of Last of the Summer Wine. So much so, in fact, that when the series was first envisioned, it was going to be called The Library Mob. Uh, this series was about three men cast out of society, and the library was effectively their base of operations, somewhere they could go and cause trouble for Mr. Wainwright, the librarian, and his assistant, before heading off on other adventures. But it soon became apparent that the series was about much more than this, and so the title, Last of the summer wine was born. This building was never in fact a library at all and today is a very respectable Methodist chapel. Ooh, ooh, I have to touch you, it's oh. a need. Oh Mr Fisher. <laughs> The 
first scene in which we see our trio walk through the centre of Homfer featured this community hub, which at the time was a laundrette. Listen here, you scruffy little hermit. I'm trying to talk about social history here. I mean, look at that building, for example. Look at that building, for example. That used to be Lloyd's Bank for the town of Homefirth, and now it's not. It's abandoned. All of these shops, all of these building facades have changed over the course of 37 years. And the series has shown that in every single episode. It's a microcosm of British culture as a whole. <laughs> right. <laughs> Life is cyclical, isn't it? That's the theme that we took from the pilot episode of Last of the Summer Wine. Compo Clegg and Blaymeyer meet up and then they go their separate ways. They go in the library, they get thrown out of the library, they go back in the library, they catch a tiddler in the river and then they let it go. Now we can't find the actual location where they catch the tiddler. Look at this, could be anywhere. If you know where this is, do please write in and let us know. But we think we've found the location where the tiddler is released. It's just here, literally behind the co-op car park. It's been redeveloped quite a lot since 1973, but it's still recognizable. Now I've got my tiddler here. It's not a tiddler in it really. And I'm going to let it go. Bear with me a second. Just avoiding the ducks. They look pretty ferocious. Oi! <sighs> There you go, have a drink of that. Help me up, will you? God, oh, my back's been something terrible. <laughs> so, this is the one shot that we think we have managed to line up from 1973. If you look at this window, this very window behind us, you can also see it behind Compo and Blaymeyer in this view from the pilot episode. I don't know, Drew. It's a rum old world. Nonetheless, I think I'll go get a bit of sausage for me tea. <laughs> <laughs>